Hello, a few people in the Discord were asking how to set up the master node for G999. Um, I saw a few people throwing around a few hosts, but there were quite a few confused people as well. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going over three platforms. Two of them are quite easy to set up your master node on. One is Amazon AWS, which is quite difficult to set it up, but I'll go over that as well. So if you're more technically minded, you might want to go down that route. Uh, so basically, the links for all of these hosts are going to be in the description of the video. If you have any questions, just tag me on the Discord as well. Um, so yeah, so basically you want to sign up with DigitalOcean first, because we'll start off with DigitalOcean. Uh, if you sign up in the link below, I believe you get $100 free credit, although that might have expired. Uh, I had that four months ago, and they gave it to you for 60 days. So that's a good starting point. Um, but basically, once you log in, it'll look like this fairly simple uh, and you're going to want to start a new project in this one I'll just put that select the purpose um, web application uh, whatever and create a project uh, skip that for now and then you'll come up with a page like this it's pretty simple um, you don't need to worry about anything down here uh, basically you just need to go with get started with droplet here where it says Ubuntu, because this is the only operating system that is supported at the moment, make sure you click this drop down because it's going to default to 20.04. Uh, you want to go for 18.04. I'm going to go with uh, basic, but you can pick any of these depending on what you see later down the line if people give you more information. Typically, you're going to want to go for maybe the $15 to $20 one, uh, but I'm just going to go for the $5 one while I'm showing you what to do. I'm going to go with London. This could be any way you want, really. You don't need these extras. Um, this bit with the authentication, it really depends on how secure you want to make this. Uh, I'm going to do password in this instance, but if people ask about it, I'll do a separate video on SSH. Um, so in password, it says type your password. I'm just going to use the randomly generated one that Firefox gives me. But you can, you can type anything in there as long as it fits these requirements. Uh, you only want one droplet. A droplet is like a different server under that one project that you've got, like an instance. Um, for this for this purpose, I'm just going to do one droplet. If you have multiple wallets, you're going to have you're going to have a different droplet for each wallet. And then you select the project, this one, and create droplet. So that might take a few minutes to go through. This little bar is just showing you the progress. Sometimes it goes back a bit, like that. Um, but it will eventually go up all the way to the top. Alright, so that's just finished. And now we've got yourself uh, an Ubuntu server. So this is a Linux server. Uh, if you've not used Linux before, it can be quite confusing. Uh, it doesn't have a user interface, unless you install one. Um, but it's really not that difficult to get your head around. You just have to copy and paste a few things. So, so <clears throat> what we got here is we got the Ubuntu, and then you want to click on these these uh, these buttons here, and then you want to go down to Access Console. Okay. So now you want to go and type in root. So root is like the administrator version on a Linux machine. And then you have your password field. You're going to want to put your password in here, but it won't show you what you're typing in or what you've pasted in. Once you log in, it's going to look like this. Um, so this basically is just a breakdown of everything that you've got on your server. It can be quite confusing, but we don't need to focus on that. Uh, it's been posted in the Discord a few times, but there's a GitHub page. GitHub is like a code repository. Um, and this readme basically tells you what you need to do. So when you go on this page, just skip all this. You don't need any of this. It's up till deploy VPS and configuration, and then step three. It says to use PuTTY, but we're not going to be using PuTTY for DigitalOcean. We use PuTTY for other software, or other so, uh, providers, sorry. And you should want to copy this bit here, which says wget all the way up to bash. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to open this. And then what I do is, oh, you can't see my mouse from here, but you want to right click where the flashing line is, paste, and then once you can see all of that's there, press enter, and just leave it to it. 
Um, this could take a few minutes, so you might want to go make a coffee or something. It really depends on your host. Great. So once that's done, you're going to see all this red text and some green text. Red text doesn't necessarily mean anything's gone wrong. Um, this code that you've got here, I, it doesn't matter for me because I'm not using this server. But this private key, you don't want to give to anyone else. Um, and all this information can be left as it is. And all you want to do, just to check everything's working, is type system ctl space status space g with a capital g 999d space oh wait sorry it's dot service dot service um, as long as you've got this bit saying active active running and there's no errors in under these under this bit you're good to go so that's your wallet all set up on DigitalOcean. now i'm going to show you how to use linode so once you're on Linode, you're going to have a panel like this. I'm just assuming that you've already registered with Linode. If you haven't, there's a link in the description. Uh, you should. I don't think you get any credit with this one. Um, I don't believe so. There's a lot of servers here that I've started and shut down. But I don't believe you get any credit or anything. Uh, but Linode is very easy to use if you're a new person. Uh, you just got to be willing to do some typing. Because the console that is web-based isn't great. So what we're going to do now is you go. So it will look like this. And then you want to go to line nodes on the left hand side. Add new line node. In the images, you want to scroll down and select Ubuntu. Make sure it's 18.04, not any of the other ones. In regions, wherever you live, whatever's closest, because you're going to want to be able to access this as quick as possible. For me, that's London, UK. If you're doing this on a, a proper environment, you want to go with line node 4 gig ish. Um, I suppose you could kind, well, you could try and push it to the two gig, but I wouldn't. Uh, as I'm just testing with this one, I'm going to go one gigabytes. Um, in the password, uh, I've already. Well, it won't let me. Is it just going to do it automatically for me? Oh, I didn't choose an image. That's why. There we go. In the password, I've already generated one using this tool, password generator. So I'm just going to copy that, paste that in there. It says private IP. Just ignore that. You want a public IP. Um, it will stay static, so you don't need to worry about that. And then go to create. This can take a few minutes, just like the other service. Um, so yeah, I'll come back in just a few minutes. Might as well make a cup of coffee or something while you're waiting for this. Right, so now that the uh, VPS is booted up, or the Linode, uh, we're going to be using the web console. If this looks if well if this looks annoying because you can't copy and paste the password in, you're going to want to use SSH. If you're not familiar with SSH, I am covering that in my Amazon AWS tutorial, um, which will be after this one. SSH is more secure, but it's also a pain to set up if you're not familiar with it. So in this instance, we're just going to go with Launch Console. Uh, I like to use Glish. I think Glish is better. It's just easier to use. This is uh, more reminiscent of SSHing straight into a, a server, but Glitch is just a lot neater. So I'm going to go with this one. Uh, and I have a notepad with the password that I had in it. So I'm just going to type that in. Right, so now what we want to do is, in this bit, we want to type this bit out as it was, exactly as it was, uh, and paste it straight in. So I ended up going back to uh, the one prior to Glish. So I'm on Weblish now. Uh, it turns out they've removed the paste feature from Glish. So I jump back. You can now just press Control and V to paste this bit in. Um, press Enter, and you just wait for this to happen. Same as normal. Oh, don't want to keep scrolling. Yeah, it adds stuff in the web console when you scroll and stuff like that. So don't worry about that. Just leave it to do its thing. All right, so that one's done. So now we're going to do the test. Uh, in this case, it would be... Oh, it says please check. So it's a bit weird because the console doesn't come up straight away. Sorry, I had to pause and, and start then because I was getting the service name wrong uh, basically you want to type system ctl space status space g999 
D dot service um, and then that will show you everything here if it's loading so it's the same as before anything from down here if it says there's any issues it'll let you know uh, the PID file doesn't really matter um, as long as it says active active and there's no no errors that's that done